Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Hi. Um, so, hi, I'm Dave Ronchek. I'm uh, co-founder of Kubeflow. Um, we are all about machine learning, and uh, we're here to talk. Uh, this is just a birds of the feather. I, I hope you don't mind. I, I usually like to leave these fairly wide open and have people ask questions or uh, see how we collab you know, potentially can collaborate together. Um, uh, so with that, uh, I, you know, you've seen an amazing amount of great content already about Kubeflow. I couldn't be more impressed with China, with uh, the amount of ML and AI happening on Kubernetes, and, and we're really excited to see people come together to start um, using Kubeflow in, in real production environments. Um, there are kind of a couple of questions that we get all the time. Uh, the first is related to um, what does the roadmap look like? Sorry. Um, what does the roadmap for Kubeflow look like? Um, the big thing there is that you know we do already see a lot of people out there using it in production, despite my many pleas to say like, hey, it's a little bit early for this. Um, and so what we want to do is we really want to get it to be production ready and stable. And by that I mean the underlying components are great. TensorFlow is great, Kubernetes is great, TFJob, Jupyter, these are all well understood, very highly used functions. What we're looking to do is bring stability to the API. And that means we don't, we would like not to change it as much as possible as we get to 1.0 and beyond. And so for us, for that, um, that's probably one of our biggest roadmap items. How do we uh, make sure that it's been well vetted by people who are using it um, to make sure that we're doing things properly. So we'd love to hear feedback around that. Uh, the second big thing is um, you may have seen Kubeflow pipelines just launched. That is a, a real core to the project. It's We always wanted to have this microservice oriented framework. It was very easy to wire together a number of different tools uh, to make them work. And for us, um, having a workflow orchestrator in the project itself was key uh, it took us the better part of a year, actually probably even a little bit more, um, to get that out the door. And it's now available. And now in, uh, I don't know how many of you saw the demo yesterday, but you're more than welcome to um, uh, go online, see some of our documentation and things. In, in Python, straight Python, you're able to describe uh, a number of different functions, any function you want, arbitrarily, and wire them together in intelligent ways where you know one step can do something, the second step can take the output of the first step and move on. You can spread, spread steps, you can move conditionally, all those kind of things. That's built into the project as well. Um, and that's a big roadmap item. And then the third is really around a lot of enterprise and, and higher level use cases. Uh, IAM, RBAC, upgrades, things that every enterprise needs. Um, you know, we would like to address that as well. So th that's a big question we get a lot of, um, you know, but I would really like to make this time about all of you. Uh, are there particular questions that we can answer? Um, you know, I'm happy to go out and talk about whatever you'd like. Anyone? Come on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, first, let me, uh, I'll repeat the question. Second, let me say that I don't want to be the only person answering here. I very much want Kubeflow to be a community. So if people have particular thoughts on it or, or say, Dave, you're an idiot, you know, now's the time to, to weigh in. Um, the question was uh, the API. So uh, I'll throw out an example. We, we do hear this quite a bit. Uh, are you going to standardize the APIs? Meaning, um, take serving, for example, right? Could you come up with a standard serving model for your overall thing? And then every package that checked in, you know, that was serving would have to follow a certain API standard. So that's a really interesting question. Um, we've bounced around quite a bit. Uh, there's, there's certainly a potential for some things to get pretty standardized, to be honest. Uh, and, and it's less about, uh, I, I know I threw out serving. Uh, the, the one that might be the most standardized that we come up with might be the, the operator 
right? Where right now we have TensorFlow, uh, uh, we have uh, something, you know, Cafe being worked on, PyTorch is already in, uh, MXNet has an operator, uh, there's an XGBoost operator, there's a variety of things. I, I think it's an operator, I'm, I'm actually not sure. Um, but regardless, like that's something where there, there really is a lot of value in having some degree of norm. I'm not gonna say a standard. If someone wants to check in an operator that doesn't comply, we're, you know, in the project, we're not gonna say no. But if you check in, and if it follows that standard, then something like Catib will just work. Or something like, you know, packaging your model for distributed training will just work. Uh, and that's really what we wanna do. So we wanna pull that through. It's not quite, you know, locking people out if they don't do it. Um, what I would really love is to have people own those standards. So that means like, if someone would like to come along and define the operator standard or define the serving standard, that's great. But I don't think we will ever get to a point where we will take that standard and go to, and I'll use um, uh, serving again for an example, we'll never go back to you know, TensorRT or Selden or TF Serving or Flask or anyone out there and say, well, you know, now we've all come up with this like brilliant model, you better do it this way. No, I, I, I don't think we'll get there. I think the closest we will get is um, someone will define the standard and we'll encourage projects to do it and projects that don't do it will uh, use something like Istio or something to do rewriting to make the API kind of work. But that's, that's my take. Um, uh, we just don't like, like, though it's a great idea to like instantly swap out like, oh, for this particular model, uh, Selden works and for this particular model, TensorRT works. It's, it doesn't happen that often. And so you don't need that, those kind of standards. One, one thing I, sh I will say that, that I want a standard across almost everything is uh, for common uh, GitOps and, and monitoring and observability and other things. Uh, I, you know, for example, I, I really want to make it a standard that, um, uh, you know, at Google, uh, every process in the entire company responds to, you know, WAC var Z. Um, and it spits out all the variables that, if you're internal, it spits out all the variables for um, that particular service. So that's a standard I would love to establish across everything. Again, we're not going to block people if don't do it. We're just going to make it Great if you do. Any objections to my little rant there? Yeah. Next. So, do you, uh, can you compare the Kubeflow with the pipeline AI projects? Uh, sorry, uh, pub.ai. Uh, yeah. Yes, that's also built uh, upon open source project, yeah. Oh, uh, I, I'm, I apologize, I actually don't know. Pub.ai? Pub AI. Publine.ai. Publine AI? Yeah. Oh, I, I'm really sorry, I, I, I don't know it. Oh, okay. And mind you, that, that's just uh, me being an mind, idiot. Never mind. What? Oh, Pipeline. Pipeline. Pipeline, I'm sorry. Pipeline.ai, yeah. I, yeah. I apologize. Yes, absolutely. So we know Chris really well, uh, he's great. Um, you know, I think that, that uh, Pipeline.ai is broader. Um, they, uh, you know, can take Kubeflow and make it work, um, but, uh, you know, I, I think that they, they have a little bit less opinionatedness to the underlying platform uh, than we do. They, they're, they're much broader and they're, you know, uh, he has a business where um, he's providing like higher level functionality and solutions and things like that. And, and that's really what we're trying to do. Um, uh, pipeline is great, but um, uh, it requires uh, Chris and the, the community to go all the way down the stack, a single community that has to own everything up all the way into, up and down. Um, we in Kubeflow have made an, a, another choice. And, and I like our choice, but again, we're open to feedback, which is, hey, we're actually not gonna care at all about the bottom layer. Kubernetes, you take care of it. We're not gonna go out and try and implement a new storage solution. We're not gonna go try and implement uh, a scheduling algorithm. We're not gonna go and try and you know, re-implement distributed training, anything like that. We're just gonna leave Kubernetes, you go do that. And then we're in the middle with Kubeflow, a, a, a set of norms and solutions around packaging, including workflow orchestration between those, and then, we also say we're not gonna go up. We're, we're saying like, 
We're not going to go implement a new um, machine learning framework. We're not going to implement a new uh, data transformation framework. We're not going to implement a new serving framework. We're just going to take what's already out there and package it so that, or, or encourage them to package it ideally, and have it run inside. Um, so that's our philosophy. We don't want, we actively don't want to do all those things. We just want to focus on kind of our um, narrow band. Um, but, you know, e everyone has a different solution, and so, um, you know, that, uh, I, you know, we know Chris really well, and, and uh, I, I believe he's already, if he hasn't released it yet, uh, I hope I'm not giving anything away, he's already releasing how to run Kubeflow inside Pipeline AI. So just think of it as Pipeline, pipeline is a larger thing that, that um, some people may need and some people may not, but Kubeflow is just a platform. Did I get it wrong? I apologize. Please go. No, 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 no. You got it all right. Just act, he's also actively working on getting the serving part into Kubeflow itself, also exactly. with the documentation, uh, basically on par with the Salden documentation right now. Yeah. And this is uh, probably like within the next weeks from uh, what I've seen and uh, talking to Chris. Yeah. Chris has been great. He's, he's really, really good. What else? Anyone want to talk about how they're using Kubeflow today? Problems they're running into? Uh, what roadmap items would you like us to tackle? Uh, let me get a few out of the way. We, we already know about model tracking. Uh, we, that's why we have model DB. We're very excited about that. Um, we know about uh, integrating with external services. Uh, things like taking your model and pushing it up to uh, the cloud, pushing it to IoT, things like that. Um, pipeline is pipeline. Uh, Kubeflow pipelines is designed to not require everything to run inside Kubeflow. You can pick and choose and and wire things together uh, through standard APIs. Uh, and there are there are already examples in the Kubeflow repository to show you how to do that. Uh, what else? Yeah. Everyone, this is Jeremy, co-founder of the Kubeflow project. Jeremy. Hi. Uh, yeah, so there's uh, just a couple more items that we can talk about that are on the roadmap. So one of the big things that we're working on is uh, notebooks. So one of the things that we hear a lot is um, uh, Kubeflow and Kubernetes are too hard for data scientists. So we're really trying to create a great experience um, with using notebooks. So you can train and deploy a model directly from a notebook. So that's a lot of work that's being done um, by Aricto and uh, folks at Intel, um, they're contributing to that effort. So we want to have like a, a CRD to make it really easy to manage notebooks on uh, Kubernetes. Other things that we're doing is we're focused a lot on enterprise scenarios. So um, a lot of the, the requirements we hear a lot from companies is they want to run multiple users in the same cluster, but have them be isolated from one another. So you know one user can submit TF jobs or notebooks and not have them be interfered with by another user. So we're taking advantage of things like uh, namespaces and Docker um, and RBAC rules to just make it really easy to sort of set up that user experience. Um, Hyperparameter tuning is a big one. So um, uh, Oshima and Gaucho um, and then some folks from Cisco are working on sort of making CatTib really uh, easy to use without writing any code and then making it work with all the different job operators. Um, and then uh, we're trying to hopefully work well with other projects like advisors so that we can support not only hyperparameter tuning, but also um, uh, uh, neural architecture search. And so there's a lot of algorithms in uh, the advisor project and we're hoping that we can integrate with uh, that project and make them work well. Um, and then uh, uh, we're always focused on just simplifying the deployment experience, making it a lot easier to deploy on a variety of platforms and set up all of your infrastructure. So those are some of the key things that are working. we're working on right now in our Roadmap. Oh, I guess the other big one is like inference. We're trying to create a really great story about rolling out models um, and taking advantage of Istio to do things like uh, split traffic between new models. Yeah, go ahead. All right, unless anyone else, you got the floor. Go. I hate to be the only one asking questions. Uh, for the notebook part, actually a question, do you also plan on kind of like how can I persist, how can I share notebooks uh, across different people? So I have a deep and uh, powerful passion around this. Um, and I say it all the time and I, I, this is one of these things where I, I keep dreaming. If I keep saying the words, eventually it will manifest itself into reality. 
Uh, what I would like to see is a simple template that the data science community gets together and describes, right? And it's, it can be something really, really basic. In it, you would have three directories. You would have a directory that describes your Kubeflow deployment. You'd have a directory that describes your machine learning or your pipeline. And then you'd have a directory that literally contains some sample data. And that, um, uh, that, that framework will have each of those directories, will have some metadata and some other files in it. But that's something you can share literally via Git. Uh, and that would be incredibly powerful. That, uh, you know, my dream is you go to, you, you read a research paper and at the bottom there's a link and the link goes straight to the GitHub and you hit fork and you download it and presto, now you've replicated the entire thing. Now, that's the non, um, uh, non, uh, uh, you know, single entity story. I, I very strongly believe that that is a great story and we should, if you want to help me with this, please come and mail me. But, to your point, there's a second half of it, and uh, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about uh, AI Hub, which is uh, something just launched from Google, which is designed to be a sharing repository um, that is a little bit more closed source and, and uh, intended to be more like within a single organization, which is a really common problem as well. Um, and there will be all sorts of models that go up from from uh, you know, Google, Google examples and things like that, uh, where you'll be able to go up, you'll click a single button and download it to Kubeflow. Uh, but that's more, a little bit more of a commercial like experience and I, I want to do both. To your, yeah. first, to your first point, I wish every NIP submission was a Jupyter Notebook. Sorry? I wish NIP submissions were actually Jupyter exactly. Notebook. So I think there's, there's two efforts that I can mention um, that sort of exist today. So one is Arikto is, make, is, is a company that's building a storage product. Um, and what they basically do is they have a, a container storage interface plugin um, that uh, allows them behind that, they have a hub for data sets and, and data that they can basically snapshot um, using peer-to-peer -peer networking. And then they can uh, get mounted via PVs and PVCs through the CSI. So they've integrated that with Jupyter and, and have integrated that into the Kubeflow story. So what they can do is when they spawn notebooks, you can specify you want various volumes um, where your data will be snapshotted for both your notebooks itself as well as your data. They then have this hub product from where you can replicate those networks, uh, those, um, I forget what they call them, I think they're snapshots or whatever. So you can actually take that data and make them available to somebody else in your organization via snapshot as a PV that they can then mount. Um, the other thing that's really cool, it's not part of Kubeflow, but it's really worth checking out is what Netflix has done with notebooks, their, their Interact effort. So they've actually, um, they use Jupyter, the runtime, uh, but they've replaced the front end with a React-based notebook for um, uh, a, 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 re, a React-based web app that serves as the front end for the notebooks. And this allows them to do a lot of cool things so they can actually store inside the, the notebook, the, J, uh, the JSON file itself, data to power plots and um, um, visualizations or, and results in the notebook. So they can then take that notebook and effectively just snapshot it to get you a completely sort of hermetic um, result that documents sort of the code and the results. Um, and then you can snapshot it to, to um, you know, a bucket store or something else. And I believe they're gonna eventually release some product I think called, um, I don't know what it's called, um, but some product hopefully to, to browse all those notebooks so you can uh, you know, see, see and share artifacts using the notebook. So that would be really cool. Yeah, so uh, the net is, I, I totally agree. And there's a lot of work around this. I think the, the challenge has been, even if you share a single you know, notebook file, even that is hard to reproduce, right? And that's, that's part of the, the, the impetus behind Kubeflow. Like, how do you declaratively describe, you know, your deployment, containerized with versions and all that stuff, and also declar declaratively describe your entire transformation? I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, who hasn't uh, written a transformation where on one system you made null blank, and on a second system you made null zero, and then all of a sudden your model goes off the rails, right? And you're like, well, what the hell happened? Nothing changed, but, you know, it was a different version of Python or blah, 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 blah. So that, you know, having these things where you can share it, that it go, does go beyond the notebook uh, is incredibly powerful. And please mail me, uh, I'd love help. What else?
Again, any anyone using it in production? Oh, go ahead. Anyone using it in production? Oh, there you are. Okay. Not using in production, but <laughs> <laughs> we're just wondering, like, um, if you have a team of data scientists, right? Like, the problem was how do you share notebooks across? So, um, b besides sharing notebooks, like we we want to like look through other people's notebooks. So, what what I've asked my my peers to do is to generally dockerize the whole environment so that you just have to pull the whole environment from the registry and yeah. you can recreate this. Is there a accompanying flow similar in Kubeflow? Yeah, that, that is exactly what Kubeflow is designed to do. Uh, the reason why we're not a fan of a single Docker container is that it doesn't shard very well and it, it really doesn't work in production. Uh, not that Docker doesn't work in production, Docker's great, but uh, if you went to any ML engineer and said, here's this six gigabyte you know, Docker container that you have to do exactly, and oh, by the way, every time I make a single update to a single library, you gotta smash the whole thing, that's not so good. That's not really cloud native. You're just, you might as well be building VMs. The idea in Kubeflow is you, you have a single YAML descriptor file or you have a single you know, casenet file, or whatever it might be, and you just hand that to the Kubernetes master, and the Kubernetes master will pick that up and, and instantiate the entire environment for you uh, with all the dependencies and tying everything together. So Jupyter knows how to do this, and TensorFlow job uh, knows how to do that, and you, you create all those things. And once you've done that, you can then go and create your pipeline file uh, or you already have a pipeline file, again, stored in GitHub or wherever you'd like to store it, and you hand that to um, you know, the pipeline tool that you just uh, set up, and off you go. And so that is uh, literally two commands. Um, just, you know, it, it, those commands are just as easy as they would be with a single Docker file, except now it's production ready because it is broken down into these microservices and, and you're able to edit and tweak and use you know, many nodes and so on and so forth. Does that make sense? Yeah. And we have lots of examples in our uh, repo. If you'd like to go and check out those examples and see what we're doing and tell us they don't make sense, you can do that too. Also, uh, you should go, uh, Katakoda, right there. Uh, there you are. Uh, have a wonderful browser-based example uh, where you can go and test it out without making a single change on your machine. Yeah. I'm just wondering whether there's any kind of best practice from the uh, Python notebook to uh, something like a TF job uh, to containerize it. You know, uh, so, so after I get my little capsule of, uh, uh, you know, what a job looks like done, the second thing I'd like to do, or maybe in parallel, is come up with a standard form for a notebook. And by that I mean, what would a notebook look like that was very easy to parse into a distributed job runner? Because right now, it, it really, the, you, you pointed out something, and the question was, is there a standard for what your notebook file should look like? Um, uh, in order to move it to a distributed TF job. Uh, and the reality is there's no standard. Um, there are a lot of tools, uh, what's that one, NB something, edit, some, NB convert, that, that moves it into a file that, it, that can be consumed, but that's very coarse. What I would really like is standards for annotations, standards for hyperparameters, standards for you know, hyperparameter search, you know, all these things could easily be written in a notebook file such that now programmatically that, that uh, notebook file has more information that, that the, the TF job can use. But there is no standard to date, unless you want to. Yeah, there's no, there's no standard today, but we are working on tooling um, to make it really easy to go from a Docker notebook um, to uh, running a distributed job on Kubernetes, right? And so I think the, the credit really goes here to Lyft. Um, they showed us what they've done, um, and they have a really great experience, and so we're basically just sort of copying and mimicking them. Uh, Microsoft and William has also done a lot of work here, and they started this project called Fairing, um, and so someone on my team is now contributing to that, and um, we hope to have something in like 0 0.4, but essentially what, what you'll do is in your, in your notebook, you'll define like a function or a class, 
we're going back and forth about whether it should be a class or use an annotation in Python. That will say this is basically my code. And then um, we'll have a tool, which is basically a Python library and hopefully eventually a Jupyter widget plugin um, that will say effectively convert. And what that will do under the hood is we'll convert the notebook to a Python file, do a little bit of parsing to get the code out. Then we'll actually build the Docker image for you. Um, and then we'll launch a TF job for you on the cluster. And we'll provide like a Python interface library that you can basically use from the notebook, um, as well as um, a widget. So you can do things like annotate your model with hyperparameters, and then from a widget say, I want these hyperparameters. So that's, that's the thing we're trying to do is um, having a, a notebook experience where it's really easy to go from building a model inside a notebook to training and deploying on the cluster. Cool, thank you. A absolutely, and again, we are, uh, we really do try and be open about the project. Feel free to ask these questions. I think I'm out of time here. Um, but feel free to ask these questions or more. And I think we have time for one more question. But uh, write directly in our GitHub. And we'd love to, you know, get feedback. What else? Hi, Ben. Uh, probably you should describe uh, how or oh, someone can, can get started with Skipflow. Yes. Since, uh, like, from the scratch, if they're totally new to the machine learning, to Kubernetes, to everything, but he's interested in this project, so where should he get started? With yeah, it? so um, we, we already do have quite a large community, which we're really excited about, um, and, and we're happy to help. We have Slack, there's email, and so on and so forth. Uh, I think my number one would be start with something like Katakoda. I think they're an amazing resource. They have a, a website. You just go, you start entering uh, commands, and it shows you how to set it up and run a very, very simple job, um, all very straightforward in your browser. So you install literally nothing. Um, you can also go to our documentation. You can go to kubeflow.org. We have getting started manuals and things like that. All you need is a mini cube, which is free. You can download it, you, or Docker, which has Kubernetes built in uh, for your desktop. Once that's installed, you can um, uh, start Kubeflow very, very trivially, and there are documentation and tutorials to walk you through that. You can also start on, on uh, almost every cloud provider has a you know, one-click deployment of Kubernetes. Uh, again, that should work just fine. Um, and and you know, the idea is that Kubeflow is designed to be as easy, and we're not there yet, but designed to be as easy as, as dropping to your command line and saying, you know, pip install foo, pip install bar, and off you go. It, it really is supposed to be that easy. It's not there yet, uh, but that's our goal. And, and really, it's, it's to go beyond that. So it's not just, I'm going to install this package, but now I'm going to go and, and download this entire tutorial and deploy it to my local machine or to deploy it to a cluster and get up and running, and the tutorials are out there to do that. And, and if you have trouble with those tutorials, uh, that's a P0 for us, so we want to fix them. Uh, and then Ivan uh, is, our, uh, is graciously contributing his time to the Kubeflow PM group. Uh, we do all our product management in public. Uh, you should come and join us. Every week we do a PM call. Uh, half the time it's on Asian time, half the time it's on European time. Uh, you can come, you can weigh in. Uh, we're currently in the midst of planning 0 0.4, or that's done somewhere around that. Um, and you can literally help us direct the product. So uh, it's open to you. Anyhow, I'm around. You can ask questions or whatever you like. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out. And uh, like I said, our, our number one is right now is, is really hearing how you, you're using it or what's preventing you from using it. So come uh, talk to us. Thank you.